For today's fire is yet another example of the dangers some employees face on the job, especially in a rapidly expanding city like Charlotte. Some employees go to work to earn an honest living, but some don't end up going home. They die on the job. And despite the government uncovering safety violations in the wake of those deaths, Nate Morbido's Where's the Money investigation revealed employers rarely face hefty fines. J- Nate is joining us now to talk about what you've learned in your investigation. Yeah, you know, sadly, we started investigating this earlier this year when three other construction workers passed away after their scaffolding collapsed uptown. Those cases are still under investigation, but for others, we found companies often negotiate reduced penalties. The median fine, just $5,000. Before dawn could even break, Bradley Zip here in North Carolina would call his big sister in Pennsylvania. Every morning at 5.30, my phone would ring. Those calls stopped on September 12, 2021. I missed those phone calls. Because I don't get them no more. The 51-year-old was silenced forever by fatal levels of hydrogen sulfide inside Valley Proteins, a Fayetteville animal byproduct processing plant. My brother and the co-worker were sent down to a gas chamber. An employee found the mechanic face down alongside a co-worker more than an hour after the men unjammed an auger. I'll never hear his voice again. Lori Toth. And they took that from me. Now speaks on his behalf. After a North Carolina Department of Labor investigation, the state cited the company for several violations and issued fines totaling $13,750. That is a disgrace. Valley Proteins is contesting every one of its citations. They should be ashamed of themselves. Not the kind of punishment Toth thinks will prevent future deaths. They're trying to appeal measly pennies for two human lives. This approach is far from unusual. Our team analyzed Occupational Safety and Health Administration fatality reports in North and South Carolina since 2020. We found when state and federal regulators penalize companies for workplace deaths, almost half of the time, the employers fight those fines or settle for lower penalties. How does that incentivize a company to do more to protect its employees? We will go to extreme lengths to try to defend those. Scott Mabry is chief of staff for the North Carolina Department of Labor. Oftentimes the trade-off is to try to get it corrected as soon as we can so that the hazard can't reoccur. He says if a company contests the original fine, which is calculated based on severity, they're not required to correct any hazards until their appeal is resolved, a process that can take months or even years. That's why the state regularly settles early on for reduced penalties in exchange for immediate corrective action, often asking for extra safety measures above and beyond OSHA standards. Other times, a hearing examiner or judge upon review directs the department to lower the fine. Our goal is to get the hazard corrected. The state just last year increased its maximum fines in hopes the higher penalties will deter unsafe working conditions. Mabry points out when you look just at the fines themselves, North Carolina retains roughly 90% of all penalty dollars, better than most. We've done a good job, I think. Bradley. Fun-loving, competitive, and high-spirited. This one is me. Lori Toth's younger brother didn't get to know her until both were well into adulthood. We were in foster homes at a young age, so we were all separated. Now, the family is separated again, and more than a year and a half later, there's no communication. His phone call isn't the only one she's waiting on. They don't even call me. Like, I know nothing. Toth is desperate to find out how the state will ultimately punish his employer for failing to protect him. I have nightmares thinking about how my brother died. Bradley Zip died just three weeks into his new job. Valley Proteins declined comment for this story, but a document obtained by WCNC Charlotte shows the company has since made several changes. Among them, installing a ventilation system and adding monitoring for hydrogen sulfide at all times. The document goes on to say the company still questions whether hydrogen sulfide was the actual cause of death in this case. Wow, just an eye-opening story. We're really glad you dove into this, Nate. And let's remember, workplace deaths went up last year in North Carolina. Wow, thank you, Nate.
And we'll remind you at home, you can learn more about this story if you go to our website. You can also find other Where's the Money investigations. Once again, wcnc.com slash money.